Community Services Area charges for uh, fiscal year 2018-19. James? Uh, thank you, Mayor, City Council members. Uh, this is our annual um, process that we bring forth every year in order to uh, levy charges related to our uh, community service areas. Um, just to kind of add some information on this, uh, especially related to the uh, CSA area 103, um, the drainage landscaping portion of that. Uh, in last year for 20, or this current fiscal year, 2017-18, uh, the city did not levy the $20 assessment for County Service Area 103 drainage and landscape. Uh, we received a request for documentation related to this, this assessment and we did research, uh, some exhaustive research efforts. Um, we used our consultant, uh, Spicer, helped us in that research. Uh, the assistant city manager, Gary, everybody, we, we did an extensive amount of research uh, to get that information. Uh, we were able to finally get some information this year. Because we didn't get all that information, we chose not to do the assessment last year. Uh, but after talking with various county departments this year, with LAFCO, we were finally able to obtain the documentation showing when landscaping and drainage was added to the CSA 103, and we attached them to the staff report. We staff, uh, attached uh, three resolutions from the County of Riverside uh, to show that. Um, as far as finding documentation for the actual $20 assessment, uh, that's still ongoing. We've contacted uh, Supervisor Jeffrey's office uh, for, for assistance in trying to get that information. Uh, and we're hoping to, to have that information uh, soon. Um, otherwise, this is the rest of the process is just pretty normal for the CSA uh, 22 um, and the CSA 142 and the CSA 103 lighting. It's the normal process that we've always uh, done. And so that kind of concludes my presentation. Um, Spicer Consulting is here. Uh, if there's some questions that Dan and I can't answer, um, and we'd be glad to answer any questions that we can. Thank you. All right, we go to open up the public hearing on this item. First, uh, first up, Kenny Mays. So you say 103 drainage landscaping is lacking a copy of the legal authority and supporting documentation authorizing the collection of this tax not present in the <coughs> document. It's been two years the city has been looking for these mysterious documents to no avail. On another point, one has to ask why the administrative fees are more than 20% of the cost associated with this CSA. Even the county does not charge that much. Thank you. Joseph Morbido. Before starting my comment in full, let me re-ask my questions from the last meeting that I'm anticipating answers to tonight. <coughs> One is, when it comes to the Severa Green Belt and CSA 103, what is it we're paying for? Two, when was the last time this work was sent out to bid? Three, why are we paying that much? And please explain administrator and what that line, why that line is getting 25% of the levy. Now back to my uh, pre previously written comment. Hi, council, staff. <clears throat> Ever read a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People? It's a good read. I suggest you put it on your bucket list. Now, chapter one is called Don't Kick Over the Beehive. In short, it's telling you the best way to get along with others. Now, the rule at the end of the chapter simply says don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Now, with that sage advice in mind, how can I discuss my displeasure with the Severa Green, the green Belt, the way it looks, the way it's administered, the way that the CSA 103 tax wasn't levied last year, costing the city over $20,000 in lost revenue. That staff tends to be a little slow in responding to fair questions from taxpayers that live in the area and still adhere to Del Carnegie's maxim. Now, it would be a fair assumption that the administrator would give a good ass chewing to the groundskeepers that can't be bothered to pick up the trash there, especially considering that there's only about 35% of the grass to mow compared to a few years ago. However, the same trash. This is in the same places that I was here last time. 
and the baby weeds have now hit ad adolescence. There was an event at the park at Wonsong Valley that was attended by two council members and the city manager. That gave them time to see the green belt firsthand and that the descriptions of its poor state are very accurate. One might think that after seeing such a mess firsthand, that would get them to make a phone call or two and get some needed attention to it, if for no other reason than to shut that blogger guy up about it. This is one of the reasons why I'm running for city council. When these kinds of issues are brought up by the residents, it's incumbent upon the city to get answers, complete answers, and in a reasonable time frame. A month has gone by since the city council meeting where I presented a slideshow of the area and nothing visible has been done to address the issues. You can see how that tests a person's resolve to not criticize, condemn, or complain. Who wants to take some of those questions? I'd be more than happy to jump in on those, um, Mr. Mayor. So um, there's a handful of, of questions. Let me just make sure I have my notes um, straight before I dive in. Um, question about administration fees, uh, what they cover, percentage, 20, 25% were the two different numbers that were presented. Um, discussion on the green belt, what they're paying for. Um, last time we went out to bid for that. And a question again about admin. I think those were the items of concern. Let me do my best. Um, and I'm going to start back in 2009 was the first time that the city of Wildemar um, actually started filing the CSA report uh, on behalf of the, the county of Riverside. Although at that time, though, Mark Hughes, the, the member of Riverside County Transportation, still managed this contract. So in 2009, the budgets that came to the city were the budgets that were provided to us from Riverside County. We basically filed the report with the assessor, uh, and, and that was really the role of, of the city. Um, the administration charges at that time um, and the contracts that were used at that time have been consistent through till today. Um, 2013... Um, the city actually transitioned the maintenance of those agreements that Mark Hughes was spending, and we took them under our umbrella. And for the last couple of several years, um, we've maintained that same uh, contractor. We've maintained that same level of percentage of administration. Now, administration is confusing. What all does that include? And so I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But it was important to note that the percentages, the line items, the budgets have stayed almost identical since at least 2009 that we first filed the report on this CSA. The assessments have been $20, they've not um, changed, and the contractors have been the same. So that answers the question as far as the last time it's gone out to bid. It hasn't. We, we maintain the, the current operation. Now, CSA 103 um, drainage, um, the landscaping piece and how that breaks down. Um, for an example, last year we spent $3,229 um, on our landscape contractor, Adami. Adami basically spends us a flat fee of $250 a month, and then he charges us fees for any repairs that are in, in above what he does for, for service. And does that also include trash cleanup? That does not always include trash cleanup. When he's there, he'll pick it up. Our crews, when they cycle through, if they see it, they'll grab it or if there's a notice. So every time I get a notice, we send it over to PV Maintenance. It's their job to go out there and pick up the trash because it is in the public right of way. Um, the other thing I wanted to share on landscape, since I'm on that item, it falls in line with the green space. You know, green space, when these things are developed, they have really actually have a life of seven to eight years. Um, that area has not been redone for seven to eight years. It's very challenging to keep it green um, because of the roots, because of a handful of things. So the concerns that the citizens have had have been the same concerns that our staff has had for the last couple of years. We've gone as far as looked into what would it take to remove all of that, replace it. Um, it's about a $25,000 price tag. Um, we have not jumped on that, nor have we brought it to you as a decision packet, um, primarily because um, we're in a deficit on that, so we'd be asking the city to find another fund source to actually uh, offset that. Um, 
So that's the green space, um, and that is the um, landscaping piece. On the administration, an administration covers a handful of things. The assessment engineer, i have heard people talk about the assessment engineer. Their bill is only $700 of that overall administration. It's peanuts. They, they, they send us a bill. It's spread out amongst all the different um, CSAs and LLMDs. Their charge for CSA 103 drainage and landscape was $700. Most of that comes in um, the rest of our staff, our crew, um, pub, if, um, Les Chapman who's part of our public works team, his routine work, legal for reviewing all of the resolutions, staff, myself, preparing the staff reports. Those are parts, that's part of what has to happen when you do a landscape assessment, a community service area assessment. There is a percentage of administration. 20 to 25 percent is not too off. In fact, oftentimes it's 30 to 35 percent for assessments for administration. That's what it is. Um, so that answers that question. Um, and I do not believe I missed a, a piece. I'm welcome to answer any other questions you might have. I wouldn't close the public hearing. Does the council have other questions they want to ask the staff? I would like uh, to do a little explanation because I guess I'm the history, I'm the oldest one up here. I was here when that track was built. All four builders in that track filed bankruptcy and went under. You guys all have CCNRs that you get in your preliminary title report, yet there is no agency to enforce those. An HOA, a homeowners association, was never formed. Um, after the track was built and people moved in and nobody was taking care of the green space anymore because there was no HOA. There was no one to enforce the rules about RV parking. There was no one to do anything. That's not a city's job to enforce your CCNRs. That is a homeowner association job. So they got together the houses that were there. It wasn't completely built out, but it was about half maybe built out. And those owners went to the county of Riverside and volunteered. They wanted an assessment. They wanted the county to mow that green and to do that work. And Dan has spent many hours, many hours, trying to get some of this information from Riverside County. They were supposed to have sent us everything that affected us. We got nothing on that CSA. Nothing. So Dan has been digging diligently, spending his time trying to find those documents. We've gone, like I said, he said to the supervisor's office, we've gone to... Um, planning, building, we know when and how it happened, and we have almost every document to show that it did happen, but that's why the confusion. There's no HOA, and it's not too late to form one. You guys could form one right now. You have your CCNRs, you could elect officers for your HOA, you could decide what you wanted to charge to enforce those CCNRs. They're important in keeping a trap looking nice, and keeping everybody in conforming as to what you agreed to when you bought the property. But this city has done its best and still working on trying to get these documents from Riverside County. You know what it's like, you know what it's like, Kenny, to go and ask for a document and try to get it. And, and we know who to ask most of the time. And we still had trouble getting them. I think Dan has done an excellent job at getting the documentation that they can find. We didn't lose it. We never had it. And we are diligently looking for it and trying to get it to people who have requested copies in a timely manner. But we can only do so much. I've worked on it. I've been in real estate my whole life out here. I've had title companies looking. It's on your, your preliminary title report. If you look on there, it lists it right there. But to find the documentation to back that up, even the title companies haven't been able to find it. So just trying to give you a little bit of background and why it's happened and how it's happened. But if you formed an HOA, you could take over maintaining all of that and have it perfect. Have it just the way you want it. With your own government right there. Well, I just want to add, um, so the I know we talk a lot of time in legacy like, like code or acronyms, so it's a county service area, so CSA 103. This was formed back in the 1970s. So remember, Wilmer's been city for 10 years. So to Marsha's point, you go to ask the county for documents, it takes a while to get them, or they have to find them in some sort of archival uh, method. 
So we're talking about something that's happened so long ago, um, and it was the $20 that was placed on there, and that's never been raised. It's still $20. So therefore, we all know the cost of water has gone up, and the cost of everything has gone up since 1970. So us bringing in that $20,000, we are spending out. That fund is in the hole. We spent 93000 on just one item in there for the drain. Yeah, for the drainage. So that account, that fund is in the hole, therefore being subsidized by the general fund. Um, and we'll be continuing to do so unless we raised it. Um, so just another little bit of information. Along the same lines, starting in our agenda packet on page 253 are all the archival documents that we've been able to find from the county that go through from 94 to, and then the <coughs> most recent item I believe was in 2000, what was it? No, 94 this morning. But when it came to the county and everything else, all their original Form 11s. So we've found quite a bit of it. Not every piece, but we're getting there. So, all right. Anyone have any other questions on any other? Uh, yeah, I was just asking, asking regarding the... Uh, all right, come on to the uh, microphone, George. Did you, did you speak on this one? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, I did, I did not. I just want to provide you some of the information in regards to funding. Uh, El Senor Valley Municipal, along with the Metropolitan Water District, uh, is getting ready to to re renew the uh, you know the uh, land you know rebate Drop program. Uh, and and along with that, El Senor Valley is also thinking about you know adding more to it. The last time they uh, they provided uh, two dollars per per foot, and then El Senor Valley uh, provided one dollar. And I think we, you know, we spent something like eight hundred thousand. Can you make sure that the cities can also take advantage of that? Definitely, this is the reason why I want to make sure. When you say twenty-five thousand, uh, you know, we should be able to, you should be able to, uh, uh, to apply for that sure. and help you out. Uh, and you know, there's, there's some, not only for the uh, uh, lot removal, but also that they can provide you with for drip uh, irrigation. Uh, you know, and they have. Uh, like six different types of uh, uh, landscape, uh, you know, uh, plants that you can use. Right, so that is one thing. Thanks, Change right. it out. Because the water, that's one of the biggest costs is the water for them. <clears throat> All right. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, I'll take a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Tie goes to the lady. <laughs> it's all right. She can answer. Any opposed? So moved.